Hi everyone, it's Joe Chaffee on this holiday weekend as we uh, take a look at what's going on. I have to tell you the way it looks going into the next couple of weeks, if you live in the western part of the United States, it's going to be absolutely unrelenting. And uh, this is the storm that went into southwestern California last night. It is now uh, the moisture, most of the moisture with it is inland, but we're still getting some moisture running uh, northwest, southeast along the coast. You can see it here with the clouds, but the uh, uh, the colder cloud tops, <clears throat> the higher cloud tops are all uh, inland, and, and there's a sweeping arm that's actually moving into the mountains of Mexico that's going to produce some snow. And right behind it, we have another major storm here sitting much further north, and this is going to be heading toward the Pacific Northwest, and you, and, and you can see the long arm that extends out from this runs down uh, to uh, just parallel to the middle of the California coast. So this is going to eventually sweep its way inland. And, you know, the pattern as we look at the long, in the longer term uh, just shows uh, more and more activity. In fact, I just want you to take a look. We're going to start with the upper air today and show you uh, what's happening. This is the uh, forecast for uh, this 1 o'clock in the morning on uh, Sunday, here's the uh, system that just came in. Here's the one that's swinging in now. Here's another one behind it. And this absolutely unrelenting Pacific jet just continues to roll along uh, with system after system. And in the meantime, here in the east, because of the fact that the there really is no polar flow whatsoever, uh, we're seeing uh, temperatures up into the 60s today in many locations. I'm going to get to the eastern weather in, in a minute, but that first system gets ejected eastward. It really, you don't really see too much of it. Much of it just kind of gets pulled up here to the north. And here comes the next one uh, into the west on Tuesday. And, you know, one of the things that I've, I learned over, uh, from observation from over the years that um, winters, the winter pattern sets up generally in, in two pieces where you get the pattern that sets up from late November to about early January or so, and then there's a bit of a break where the atmosphere kind of relaxes, and then virtually the same pattern just repeats itself uh, to, for the most part uh, for the second half. Now, for this winter, it was kind of, it was slightly different because we've been getting these little flips here in the east every couple of weeks, but the basic theme in, uh, has been for this deep trough to be in the west, and, and here's one next weekend. You know, another system drops down uh, from the north into Southern California. Another one follows it right behind, and you know you have this just endless energy that's piling into the west, and I, I don't really see that breaking anytime soon. I mean, right through the 16-day period, you have a deep, you know, basically a deep trough in the west, and um, a tendency for uh, big ridges, uh, stronger ridges in the east. And this is conducive to severe winter weather in the western part of the United States. And, you know, that's pretty evident here. And it's conducive to uh, not so much uh, in the eastern part of the United States. It isn't really toward the end of the period. Now we're through the first week of March that once again we've got the model producing uh, a, a block in Greenland, which it's done many times before, but you know what? If the troughs and the ridges are in the wrong place, it it, it doesn't help as far as um, any you know any winter weather reprieve here. Well, reprieve uh, any uh, return of um, of a of a of a winterish pattern, let's call it, for the eastern part of the United States. Now, let's look at what the surface has to offer. Because I do think what's going to happen is overall the pattern across the U.S. Uh, is going to be more active in terms of storm, storminess, but in terms of where these storms wind up going is another matter. And of course, every model has its different opinion on this. So we're going to roll back and let's look at um, the next, first of all, through the next five days, there really isn't too much that happens in the east. All the actions in the western part of the U.S., uh, we've got that system that's coming in late tonight and tomorrow. There it is into the Pacific Northwest with heavy snows down into the uh, northeastern part of California. Uh, that low is one that translates inland. And this one is going to survive uh, with more energy 
as it moves into uh, Colorado and then eventually into Kansas. And then you start to see snows break out across the northern plains uh, into Minnesota and northwestern Wisconsin. We had something similar to this uh, back a few weeks ago. And then the low runs into uh, northeastern Michigan and heads up into Canada. And in the meantime, if you look out here in the west, here's another system that drops down into southern California. Now, it doesn't look like as strong on the surface at this stage of the game as what we just experienced, uh, which was... You know, when you look at the lowest, the lower, the lowest recorded pressures from that system, it was certainly the equivalent of a very strong tropical storm uh, in terms of the pressure, uh, the one that came in uh, yesterday and last night. But after that goes another system, you know, the energy from the west now is being rolled into basically like a bowling alley. So one after another rolls up into the, into the east as uh, the GFS at least wants to bring storm after storm. Uh, through the Great Lakes, and you know, uh, there's four of them here in this sequence. So, in fact, there might, there's more. So here's the here's the well, the first one doesn't really count in my view. So here's the first one, uh, which would be at the end of next week, and then here's the second one, which the model has it at the end of the month. You can see it's you know I would the only thing I would question is you know again I I, I I'm skeptical in terms of depth. I don't know that it'll actually come out this way in terms of how these storms evolve, but there's the second one. Here's a third one uh, that runs up uh, and tries to redevelop along the mid-Atlantic coast and moves out. And, whoops, my fault. It's jumping around. So here's the third one, okay, and here's a fourth one. I mean, it's amazing. It's just one after another, after another, after another. Now, we will look at the... Uh, upper air here with this model and again you can see in the east throughout this whole period it's a there's a ridge in the east it doesn't want to let me roll it back but here's our ridge for this week and you see how strong it is uh, for the first part of this week then it kind of gets flattened out a little bit as the trough goes by and then the ridge pops right back up trough again in the west and then, you know, it just just pretty much this is how it's going to play. And there's another ridge. It's endless as far as what goes on here uh, in the east. Now, the European, we'll take a look at that for comparison. Um, and I'm going to venture, European only goes out 10 days, of course. Uh, but let me roll ahead. So here we are uh, for today. Here's our ridge in the east for early next week. Kind of gets flattened out a little bit activity goes to the lakes and then you've got the ridge in the east it gets flattened out a bit and then up it comes again around day 10 as another deep trough forms in the west uh, i i honestly think that uh, the you know the models are pretty much uh, saying this is this is the game for the next few weeks trough in the west ridge in the east no sign, in my view, of any of that changing uh, anytime soon. It is a, um, it just, it's just the way the pattern is. I, I want to look at the temperature profile. Uh, let's see. So we'll look at the, I want to look at the temperature anomalies. Because I think they're going to pretty much tell the story over the next couple of weeks. And by the way, the European long, long range models, which I don't really get to see unless somebody posts them in some weather group, have been, um, you know, been telegraphing, uh, you know, basically, a, a, you know, much warmer weather in the east, warmer than normal temperatures for the uh, end of February and the, the second half of February and the beginning of March. And you know what? It was pretty much spot on. Okay, so here we are now for this weekend, obviously. Uh, you can see, look at the extent of the above normal temperatures through this week into southeastern Canada. It's below normal in the west, which would make sense because that's where all the troughing is. And you just have no sign. Uh, now we're into day 12. You know, it starts to get a little colder in Canada. But again, all of it piles it down in the west with the trough the way it is. So until we see some major change in the alignment of where the trough is, I think it's just more of the same. You know, I still want to hold on to the idea that somewhere along the line between now and the middle of March, that there'll be, well, certainly not now and through the end of the month. It's just not going to happen. But uh, I would, 
I still would like to think that sometime during the first two weeks of March that there will be a window for one possibility. Um, maybe even two would be stretching it. But I'm sorry from what I see, and I know there are there are some long range folks that are jumping up and down uh, about um, something, uh, some sort of pattern flip in March. These are the same ones that told you about the February to remember, um, the the December to remember. Um, and on and on and it goes. I'm sorry, I don't see it. Your indexes may be showing you one thing, but the atmosphere is telling you another, and it's very hard to fight. So you know what? Prove it to me, because I, I I don't see it happening um, at all. Not not given what what we're what we have here in terms of the upper air. So. We'll leave it at that today. It's a holiday weekend, so we'll keep them short. Uh, welcome to my YouTube channel. For those of you in the West, I've been trying to spend a little more time in terms of dealing with the weather in the West because many of you have told me that nobody does it. So I'm going to try and do it some more. And uh, my regular subscribers, thank you for being here. Uh, my new subscribers, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's absolutely free. A little button up in the corner uh, to go ahead and click on that. And you'll get notified whenever a new video comes up. Website, weather posts on meteorologistjoechaffee.com. And you can download my app and subscribe to my forecast uh, on, uh, it's My Weather Concierge, but I'll put the link up. It comes up on a card in the corner of the video here, and you can click on it. Forecast specifically uh, written uh, for New York, New York City, New Jersey, Long Island, Connecticut, the Hudson Valley, and uh, Eastern Pennsylvania. So everyone have a great uh, rest of your Saturday and uh, enjoy the rest of your holiday weekend. We'll have a new video up tomorrow.